Remember when we talked about deviance, Robert Merton's strain theory? Well, he's back at it again, and now he's talking about patterns of prejudice. So according to Robert Merton, the structural functionalist, there are four different patterns of prejudice, and it involves being prejudiced, having an attitude of prejudice, and acting in a discriminatory fashion. So let's look at the first, the active bigot. The active bigot is both the script prejudice and they discriminate. So again, the active bigot is someone who's prejudiced and they discriminate. They don't like a group and they treat that group unequally. And then there is the timid bigot. Now timid means afraid or cowardly. This is someone who is prejudiced, but they don't discriminate. Now, what does that look like? Well, you might have some very racist, bigoted attitudes about a particular group, but you never say it out loud. You kind of hide it. Or you don't act on your prejudice tendencies because you don't want to be judged a certain way. You don't want to be labeled racist. Or maybe you're afraid you'd be sued if, let's say, for instance, you don't want to give someone a job. Or you don't want to uh, let someone rent property that you own. So you fear the law. Therefore, you won't act on your discriminatory um, beliefs or impulses. And then there's the fair weather liberal. Now, the fair weather, weather liberal might be someone who confuses you. The fair weather liberal is someone who's not prejudiced, but they discriminate. Hmm. Thinking man emoji. Now, what does that look like? Someone who is not prejudiced, but they discriminate. Well, you're hanging around all your friends and they're calling, you know, black people the N-word. And you don't say anything about it. I mean, you're, you would never use that word, but... Someone's using it in your presence and you don't say, hey, I'm offended. You just keep it to yourself. Or let's say you own a home you're trying to sell and you can't get a buyer. So you decide to rent it. One of your neighbors comes across the street and says, hey, uh, Fred, I noticed that you, uh, you're you renting your house now. Well, you know, we like our neighborhood the way it is, if you know what I mean, wink, wink. And we don't want certain people living in our neighborhood, wink, wink. So, uh... Be real careful who you rent your property to, fella. Now, what are they telling Fred? Don't open the, the house up to someone that doesn't look like other people on the street. So what does Fred do? Fred sees a, a minority group, comes knocking on the door. Let's say it's an Asian family or a Mexican family, and they want to rent his property. And he says, oh, I'm so sorry. I meant to take that sign off the lawn. It's not available after all. That's being a fair weather liberal. Or... You date outside your race, but you've never let your family know because they don't like you interacting with people who are not the same race as you. That's the fair weather liberal. Then there's the all weather liberal. Now, this is who most people want to believe they are. But are you really? This is the person who's neither prejudiced nor discriminating. They don't have a prejudicial attitude towards any group, and they don't discriminate. Now, who might that person be? You know what comes to mind? When I think of that person, a kid under the age of maybe six or seven. Because when children are young, they're innocent. They don't know anything about racism. We're not born racist. We learn those attitudes from our parents. We learn to be bigots. We learn to be prejudiced. We learn to discriminate. But when a child is small, all they care about is meeting friends. So back in the day, you know, back in dinosaur days when we actually could go to the mall before coronavirus, you would see kids out there just playing with each other of all races, just having a good time. They didn't care that you didn't look like them. They just wanted a friend. That's the all-weather liberal. And again, that person is rather rare. Now, what is institutional discrimination? Institutional discrimination is discrimination that gets built into our overall social structure. So we see patterns of inequality in health care. They found that that medical professionals don't, for instance, give um, pain medication to African Americans to the same rate that they do whites uh, because they have this belief that black people can tolerate pain. That goes back to slavery, and that's not true. I don't know if you know this, but there's a painting behind me. That's my beautiful nephew, Joshua. He died of cancer in 2015 at the age of 22, actually 10 days after his 22nd birthday. Now, when he was in the hospital, he needed lots of pain medication because the cancer was eating him alive. And I actually had to, to almost physically confront a nurse who happened to be white 
because he was slow giving him medication, claiming he gave him enough already. I can't even talk about it. It makes me so upset. But later I found that there was this study that revealed that doctors and nurses are slow to give pain medication to black people, even when they're dying from cancer, because there's this belief that we have this superhuman tolerance to pain. That's racism in medicine. And the fact that African-American women are three to four times more likely to die in childbirth than white women are. That's racism in medicine. So we see that. Racism in education. The criminal justice system which is why we're now talking about criminal justice reform, and then economic patterns of inequality that we see. I just quoted you one earlier, that whites are three to, three to four times more likely to not be poor compared to um, African Americans and Hispanics, or more pointedly, blacks and Hispanics are three times more likely to be poor than whites are. So yes, um, that is what institutional discrimination is.